Guédelon, c'est une aventure un peu folle au cœur de la forêt bourguignonne. Depuis une vingtaine d'années, on a décidé de, de construire pour comprendre un château fort du XIIIe siècle. Le XIIIe siècle en France est une période fabuleuse. Personne n'avait jamais construit de, dans notre monde contemporain de château du XIIIe siècle. Donc de la première pierre à la dernière tuile, il va falloir qu'on apprenne. Nous sommes une équipe de 70 personnes, dont une quarantaine qui bâtissent ce château fort. On a annoncé 25 ans et qu'avec cette équipe, rien n'est impossible et les rêves les plus fous sont réalisables. Alors Guédelon il est différent des autres châteaux qui sont dans le monde tout simplement parce qu'il a été fabriqué au 21e siècle avec des moyens qui eux sont médiévaux, hein, avec des techniques qui ont 800 ans. J'ai fait une dizaine d'années de, de chantier un petit peu partout en France. Alors comparer Guédelon avec ce que j'ai fait avant ça va être difficile parce que euh, Guédelon est un chantier qui est unique en fait, c'est de la science, c'est de l'archéologie et euh, ça, ça me convient bien. Quoi. C'est un retour dans l'histoire que je trouve intéressant. Chaque petite pierre a été taillée. Chaque pièce de bois a été abattue à la main, écarie à la main, euh, tracée à la main par une équipe fabuleuse. Donc ça, c'est magnifique. Et donc là, il y a une énergie incroyable que je trouve complètement émouvante. On a un vrai château en fait et c'est nous qui l'avons fabriqué. Donc moi, je suis quand même super fier de ce qu'on fait. C'est quand même une super aventure. Cuando empecé a construir esta catedral, todos los corrillos, era eso, que yo estaba loco. Y no se creían que yo iba a ser tan constante y bueno, les estoy dando como un revés a la gente. Y eso me agrada porque para que vean que cuando un hombre confía en Cristo, he nacido en el año 1925, Y llevo construyendo esta catedral 53 años. Yo cuando empecé a, a empezar la catedral era joven, ahora ya mayor, porque a nueve ya es mucho. No he estudiado la arquitectura, soy un labrador. Tenemos ahí Salones parroquiales, los claustros, tengo un batisterio, que es la entrada, en esa cúpula y la crista, claro, con una, una escalinata que no, no la hay en Madrid, esa. No quiero materia, dinero nada. Y entonces lo he desechado, incluso en mi casa. Es imposible que yo termine la catedral en vida, porque queda muchísimo que hacer. Pues la esperanza que tengo yo de esta catedral, cuando yo me muera, pues se lo dejo en las manos divinas. Yo no, no sé dónde llegará, ¿eh? Se, el ángel se carga de ello, ¿eh? A mí me gustaría que me enterraran en esta catedral, que eso es muy importante, ¿eh? para mí. No, io sono Bruno, sono l'ideatore e l'esecutore di questo parco ecologico. Magari osservando un movimento in natura che c'è, un ramo che si abbassa, un uccello che vola. E di conseguenza mi sorge l'idea. Magari quel movimento, dico, potrei anche fare un gioco. E da quel momento posso giudicarmi di adesso lo preferisco. Io 
io posso lavorare un'ora, un giorno intero o un mese intero. Pian pianino mi cresce l'idea, cresce la giostra. Quando è finito, io me lo guardo. Ah, dico, ma oh, guarda che bello che è questo gioco, l'ho fatto da me. Dai 40 ai 50 giochi ci sono, dai più piccoli naturalmente ai più grandi. Tutto a forza manuale, non ci sono meccanismi. Se tu vuoi giocare, qui devi spingere e sudare, altrimenti il gioco non si muove. Questo è l'importante e il bello di questo parco. I genitori, per far vedere ai bambini come si gioca, salgono che loro, ma io in cuor loro sono convinto che ritornano bambini anche loro. È bello, quella, bello vedere queste cose. Quando cammino in mezzo al mio parco qui, specialmente quando verso sera, verso il tramonto, che sono da solo, allora mi guardo e il mio cuore si allarga per aver creato dal niente un qualche cosa che poi sarà nel tempo. Ralph Waldo Emerson once quoted that, that nothing great can ever be achieved without enthusiasm. I have a lot of enthusiasm. This is Northlands in Flemington, New Jersey. Northlands is the world's largest model railroad. Well, I guess, you know, everybody has a passion for something. My thing was trains. I had trains around the Christmas tree as a kid. Wherever I lived, I'm planning uh, track plans. And then over 18 years, I added five basements onto the house. And from that, I got fairly good at making mountains and bridges and design work. And we decided to give it to the world. So we tore it all down bought this land, built Northlands. Any given day, we run between 85 and 90 trains. Some of the details in Northlands inside, about 40,000 feet of track, about 4,000 buildings, over 400 bridges. Many of the mountains in here are three and a half stories high. Most things in here are scratch built. Underneath the entire superstructure, there's enough lumber to build about 42 large houses. It takes a few hours to go through for the average person to see everything. We went millions into debt to build this place. Everybody thought we were nuts. And the only one that believed that what I wanted to do was my wife, and she was totally with me on this, big time. It's an artistic endeavor. It's a gift to the world of what I can do, and it makes a lot of people happy. The town of Regent is dying. I said, if someone doesn't do something, this community will be a dead community. I have a paved road from interstate to Regent. Now what do I do to bring people down 30 miles? Then it dawned on me, nobody's gonna drive 30 miles for normal sculptures, but they might drive for the world's largest. I started the Enchanted Highway in 1989. I've been at it for 28 years, and it takes me roughly about four to five years to do one sculpture. The first year, local ranchers taught me how to weld. I put in eight hours a day to get one sculpture done. I use old oil well tanks, i cut them open and I flatten it out and that's 90% of my metal. It's a passion project right now. I started with the world's largest tin family. The man is 45 feet tall, the woman is 43 feet, and the boy is 23 feet. Geese in flight It has over 300 lengths of oil well pipe on, over 15 miles of weld on it and is in the Guinness Book of Records the world's largest scrap metal sculpture. That's something I will continue on till I'm six feet under.
and then I hope it continues on after that. I want people to see that this guy who didn't know how to weld, didn't have an art class, if he can create something like this, I can do most anything.